This is Command Post, a series of discussions about military matters from Time and the Center for a New American Security. Starting next month, we will be able to remove 10,000 of our troops from Afghanistan by the end of this year, and we will bring home a total of 33,000 troops by next summer. The President has announced that he's withdrawing 33,000 troops from Afghanistan over the course of the next year to be complete by summer 2012. Nora, did he make the right decision? It's really hard to know whether he made the right decision or not because he didn't offer a strategic rationale for why those numbers mattered. And without that, it's hard to know whether it's the right decision or not. Um, he announced that the 33,000 surge troops that were sent in December 2009 will be out by September 2012, um, but that will leave more than 68,000 troops in after that point. Uh, and he didn't really articulate a reason why those troops should be there or what they should be doing after that point. I, th I think I would add to that, uh Military commanders in the field, I think, will have little concern about the 10,000 this year. The president gave those commanders a lot of flexibility in taking those troops out, the first 10,000 now, by the end of this year, by the end of the fighting season, say, in December. Next year, he took away that flexibility. He told commanders next year, I want the remaining 23,000 of the surge out of Afghanistan by the end of the summer, which the administration is calling September. That takes a 25 percent of the combat force in Afghanistan out right in the middle of the fighting season next summer. And I think commanders, even Admiral Mullen and uh, Secretary Gates, when they testified about this recently, they both had some significant reservations about that particular date. I think that is more troubling than the overall numbers and the overall sequence. Well, General, you were a commander in Afghanistan. Tell us about how significant the fighting season is. Is that a military term that doesn't mean a lot, or is it really important? I, I think it's very different than Iraq. Iraq, you had a fighting season 365 days a year, both on the enemy side with the insurgents and with U.S. forces there. In Afghanistan, the United States and NATO fights year-round, but the Taliban really only fights about six months out of the year. They fight from about uh, March time frame, late March, early April, until about the end of October. So that summer fighting season is the peak of their capabilities and typically the peak of their offensive operation. It, it makes a difference. The commanders may also decide, uh, particularly General Allen, who is taking over for General Petraeus, um, to follow a different campaign plan on how you actually use those troops. I think we're going to see um, much less movement into the eastern part of the country. I think that was the original plan that General Petraeus had in plan for this summer. Um, where forces that are mostly been focusing on the fight in the south would move east. I think that's a lot less likely now with the announcement of the troop withdrawals, and I think we're going to see more of a focus on the counter-terror aspects of the campaign rather than actively pushing the counterinsurgency campaign into the eastern part of the country. Are we basically keeping our fingers crossed about the fate of the eastern sector of Afghanistan? Well, I think one of the things that's not clear uh, in General Allen, of course, hasn't gotten out on the ground and made his own assessment yet, but it's not clear what the strategy is going to be in the east for the coming year. In, in the last few weeks, we've seen a major offensive start in, in eastern Afghanistan uh, with troops moving up into the mountain areas, you know, several thousand of them in large uh, helicopter-borne operations. So they're carrying the offensive forward uh, despite what was laid out in the president's speech. The real question is, where does this now go? What's next, and does, does what we're doing this summer fit into this broader campaign plan for the east, which is perhaps not yet defined? One of the things I found interesting was both uh, General Petraeus, Admiral Mullen, and Secretary Gates talked about increased risk. Can you talk about what is that risk that the General Allen and his troops are going to have to accept and, and what it means? Well, there's risk in a number of different ways. I think, first and foremost, there's risks in the South where the counterinsurgency strategy has been fought over the past uh, past year or two very intensely, um, that to the extent that those troops get redeployed or move out of there, that there's uh, questions about whether the progress there will be sustained. Uh, the eastern part of the country is very important, uh, a very important base of support for the Taliban, and that's in, in a lot of ways the area where the worst fighting has been happening. And so if you don't push into that area, if you don't uh, extend that counterinsurgency strategy, there's a risk uh, that that will continue to be a very strong base of operations for the Taliban and for al-Qaeda remnants. Uh, and then there's the broader strategic risk that if we are withdrawing troops even at the pace that President Obama laid out in his speech, um, that the, the weight of the effort will not be enough to compensate for the political trends that it may cause to the extent that people who are on the fence or aren't really sure what's going to happen next 
look at President Obama's speech as a sign that the U.S. is inexorably drawing down, uh, they may change their behavior. They may be less willing to support U.S. forces, less willing to support the Karzai government um, in anticipation of the day when U.S. forces leave and they'll have to deal with all the complicated internal power dynamics that will rise to fill that gap. What, what message does, it, does this send to the Taliban? Well, I think that's one of the fundamental risks that probably hasn't been reported on very much, which is the amount of uncertainty that now goes with the speech, the second and third order effects of what the president said, how the speech is heard, not just in the domestic audience here in the United States, but how is it heard in the region? What, what does the Taliban think about the speech? What does the Afghan government think about it and what it means about long-term American commitment? What's Pakistan look at the speech as meaning for them and how they're hedging their bets against the day after the Americans are gone. So I think that's a key question. In, in war is about psychology first and foremost. In a sense, it's a duel between two players who are uh, arguing and fighting for a position of advantage. The question is, what do the Taliban take away from this? They, they may believe now that they can simply run out the clock, uh, that if they wait another 18 months, two years, two and a half years, that they can clearly see that the Americans are coming out. But it's not clear what degree the U.S. is committed to a long-term partnership with the Afghans to continue to fight the Taliban. I think that's a key question right now.